Hey there, Pilates lovers. It's Carmen Lantain, your host here on Chatter from the Center, a Pilates podcast where we get to practice who we are beyond our reformer. Hey there, Carmen here. Thanks for dropping into our chat here on Chatter from the Center, a Pilates podcast. Today, my guest is Arlene Solomon, who is from Kihei, Maui, and is the creator of Bodyworks and Pilates. Back in 1986, with an invitation to come to Hawaii, Arlene shares how she learned to live literally off the land. So different than her experience of living in the big city as a painter and exercising her intellect. Arlene describes becoming a trained horticulturist connecting with the land of Maui and how every day her body was in constant movement. The gardening and tree trimming did take a toll on her body with regular visits to the chiropractor. So when Arlene started Pilates, the obsession with how Pilates could sustain her work day after day is what gave her the motivation to practice. It wasn't until a brush with skin cancer about 15 years ago that Arlene did make a career change to becoming a massage therapist, which conveniently shared the space with a Pilates studio. Arlene went to massage school and enrolled in a comprehensive teacher training program, teaching back then what she describes as a weird blend of classical Pilates mixed with the science of anatomy. In 2012, Arlene discovered Pilatesology on the internet and was introduced to Sandy Shimoda. From the island herself, Sandy graciously offered to come host a workshop for Arlene and other Pilates teachers. This is what began the relationship with Arlene and Sandy and Jay at Vintage Pilates. Navigating menopause with full-on hot flashes, brain fog, and joint pain, Arlene graduated in 2016 from the work with Jay Grimes. Arlene describes the time that her body felt like it was in complete chaos, being asked to multitask. Today, with some time after the work, Arlene feels her Pilates is now about honesty. There is no performance, it's just her body, And she's no longer putting her hands over her ears, as she says, and not listening to the roar of her body and the joint pain. Instead, she listens to her body and is talking about juicy Pilates. With the changes in the world, Arlene has taken the slower time in her Pilates business to focus as a student studying a master's in fine art at the University of San Francisco in interior architecture and design. To her, Arlene feels the process is like full circle. As she's coming into her Pilates body, the learning is also informing her design and her projects. Join me now as I chat with Arlene about living off the land, what's behind her creative mind, and how she is aging in Pilates. Welcome to Chatter from the Center of Pilates podcast. I am your host, Carmen Lantain. And today I have asked my guest and friend who I've gotten to know, I guess, through the internet. Unfortunately, we haven't met in real time, but hopefully one day, fingers crossed, I will come to Maui or we'll catch up. And her name is Arlene Solomon. Welcome, Arlene. Did I say your last name correctly? Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. Well, welcome. And so, you know, I've done, I've done three, you're my third podcast. And when I started to think about why I wanted to do these podcasts was primarily because I know a lot of us as graduates of Vintage Pilates and other people who do practice Pilates. And even my students, I, I want to talk and chat with them. And, and what I'm curious about is how Pilates has shaped their life now or in the past, and perhaps what their practice of Pilates has, has given back to their life. And the reason I wanted to talk with you is we've had some sidebar conversations 
uh, through through Instagram on um, things about running our business out of COVID and also aging through and out through, you know, Pilates and how that's affected us. And even, um, and we'll get further into that about your current endeavor as a graduate student in a completely different um, <laughs> setting than being a Pilates teacher. So oh. I thought that these were just really curious things because, you know, we don't always stay the same. We grow, mm -hmm. we change, and not only does our mind change, but our body changes. And uh, hopefully Pilates continues to change with us too. And we don't want to stay in one spot. So Arlene, I'm wondering if you could set the, um, the narrative a bit and just tell us a little bit about you as a younger person, where you're from and, you know, how you're growing up family perhaps, and, and then coming in through your education maybe, and how you came to Pilates. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. That was actually a really long time ago. <laughs> um, before I came to Hawaii, which was in 1986, um, I guess do the math, that's well over 35 years ago. And um, so I, I'm an artist. I'm a painter and a sculptor, and I um, was invited out to Hawaii. Um, and when I came out here, it, I didn't plan on staying, but I did stay because I learned how to live off of the land. Mm. And like, so different than, um, you know, living in New York in a, in a city and being a painter and being, you know, very intellectual and, and then to, to be um, living in the wilderness with no electricity, no phone, no running water, like you had to work to get your next meal. You know what I mean? You had to garden, you had to fish, you had to haul water, you had to, you know, yeah. So that was the beginning of my, um, I guess my um, background with movement had to do with just very deliberate, um, I wouldn't say survival mode because it was so pleasant here in Hawaii. It's the subtropics. I mean, it never gets below 80 degrees ever, <laughs> hardly. And, um, but it was, I mean, you had to sweat like every single day. So that's my background um, in movement. So I was never really big on exercise, but I like my whole, every single day in constant movement. And it just made sense to me. And so I stayed here in Maui. And um, so, yeah, so yeah, I, I love going to school. And so living off of the land, I learned a lot of things, but I supplemented that with going back to school and I became a horticulturalist and a certified arborist. And I worked in conservation and I worked in forestry and, you know, all of those um, scientific things, you know, I, I got really connected to Maui um, that way. And so, yeah, so um, gardening and tree trimming and um, landscaping, all of that kind of work um, was taking a toll on my young body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was young at the time, all that kind of work, but I still um, had to go to the chiropractor all the time because oh, I was yes. like, you know, and yeah. so I was going to the chiropractor regularly. And then I think it was in like 1999 or 2000, I found Pilates. And I started, um, this This lady had a, a studio in her house. And so I started going to, um, I, I think maybe once a week, we started on the mat and um, I just loved it. And um, then I um, I got on the reformer. I remember one time she showed me the reformer, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is this is so <laughs> amazing!" And and I noticed that I could manage my wear and tear injuries with Pilates, and I didn't have to go to the chiropractor as much. And then pretty soon, as I got more and more 
like obsessed with Pilates. I didn't have to go to the chiropractor at all. Like I could totally, you know, work like a maniac and then go out the next day and do it again because I was doing Pilates a couple of times a week. And so, um, yeah. Um, and I didn't do Pilates to get exercise. I, I did Pilates as a compliment to my already, you know, I, I'm a mover. And so what I was doing every single day is, was the movement. I'm also a hiker. I love to hike. That's my recreation. Um, and, but the Pilates was really um, just like very, very personal and, and it's so essential, you know, wow. I just, I, I mean, even now I can't imagine doing without it. It's a, a part of my life until I die. So yes. um, I became a teacher when um, I can't remember what year it was, but it was, you know, some decades later, I um, working out in the sun in Hawaii, I eventually got a, a melanoma. <laughs> oh, so, wow. Um, it wasn't um, advanced or anything. It was still like a stage one. And so they removed it and that was it. That was, you know, about maybe 15 years ago. And I've never um, had to think about it since. Yeah, it was taken care of. But I made some changes and I stopped working outside. And, um, and I went to massage school. And um, right next to the massage school was a Pilates studio and they were offering um, teacher um, certification. So I went, I, I started, um, I think that was in 2009. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, I didn't introduce your full uh, title or entity, but it is Body Works Pilates and no, Body Works and Pilates is the name of your studio. Yeah. So I can see how the massage and the body work. Yeah. Is that a part? That's part of your, your, your full, your full. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. do you remember like, uh, was it a classical background or was this thought or what, um, do you recall what it was that you, oh, yeah. like, can you talk about that? Very interesting. And for, um, reasons that go right over my head, extremely political. <laughs> yeah. um, I, um, when I was, um, when I had my uh, tree trimming company, and um, I was working through that lady's house, that was, um, that was a Romanos Pilates teacher, mm -hmm. a very passionate Romanos Pilates teacher. And I learned the, you know, the whole repertoire and stuff like that and when I was at the massage school the the studio that was next door was a stock studio and because I um I see the value in everything and mm -hmm. there was there's no um classical teacher certification in the islands um but here was something right next door and and some of my uh, massage massage teachers were suggesting that I give Stott a try. And I, I was curious. And so I did. And so I, um, yeah, I went through the whole certification, but I stopped short from getting my final test out because I just, I mean, I liked the program and everything, but it, it's, it, it's so different than, yeah. um, classical Pilates and I was I just knew that I didn't want to teach stop Pilates but I had the certification to begin teaching mm -hmm. and so I taught kind of like a a very weird blend of um, classical Pilates that I had known so well for so many years and then mixed with this um uh the science of um anatomy I was going through massage school so I was mm -hmm. yeah so I did start teaching um through a stock studio and then um then I looked into another certification with a classical Pilates teacher and um I I went I did another certification with uh, she was a Romana's 
Pilates trained teacher. Um, her, I don't yes. know if I say her yeah. name. <laughs> I, very... No, I, I did write that down and I can't remember, but it was Re Rebecca Leon. Was it not? Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And um, so you worked with her. Now, was she, was this, she's on Maui or is she on the mainland? No, she's itinerant. She, that's one of the, her hallmarks is that she's an itinerant Pilates teacher and she does have um, host studios. I see. Um, okay. In, uh, overseas in Europe, um, they feature her teaching program at their studio. I see. Like, okay. Her, she has um, arrangements with different studios around the world. But I, you know, I, she's a great writer. And I remember I called her on the phone and I told her that I was really interested in a classical Pilates mm -hmm. uh, certification. And she, she said, I, I can help you. And she, she came here for six weeks. Wow. Her, her, um, she has an assistant and also a, um, they filmed the whole thing, but um, it was really intense. She's really intense. And um, it was every single day, seven days a week for about six weeks. Wow. And he even lectured while we were eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Did you have a person with you to go along in that process, or was it just you and her? It was a bunch of people. Okay. We had a nice, it was an international group. There was people here from Australia and uh, uh, Switzerland and um, uh, I think Yugoslavia. or uh, Yeah, so there was about maybe four or five of us. It was a nice okay. intimate group, but boy, yeah. it, it was intense. And, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and, and so pretty, I think that was in about 2012. And that's right around the time that I started um, looking into Pilatesology. I, okay, I, I yeah. This. I think it's Elisa's um, uh, and Jack are doing an amazing job getting people together. That's where mm -hmm. I met Sandy. Mm. And I, I saw a video um, taught by Sandy Shimoda and I reached out to her and she got back to me and she said, I'm from Hawaii. I will be there. Um, I can come to your studio. I'd love to meet you. And I was so, um, so surprised at that. I was, I was, yeah. I was just thrilled. And, and there she was, she came like she said she would. And I, I can't remember. It was a while back. It was like 2012, 13. And, and I, I think we, I got a group together to have a little workshop with her. Okay. So she taught me and about maybe two other teachers, a little workshop, but that was the beginning of my relationship with Sandy and with vintage Pilates. Eventually I went, I went uh, to LA and began my studies. Yeah. With, um, with Sandy and Karen Frischman and Jay Grimes, of course. Yeah. And so in what year did you take the teaching or sorry, you, you did the work? Did you also do teaching the work as well? No, I, um, I think I was in the work um, 2000, the year of 2016. Okay. And that was after Jay stopped um, uh, doing teaching the work. Oh, okay. Okay. But, yes, because uh, you and I met in just as of late, kind of this other arm of teaching the work Sandy has now developed called the process for people who kind of want to go beyond a bit about their own practice and more developing their voice and confidence as teacher. So she has come up with that process, which is, is very good. So I was looking at um, your YouTube and I saw this amazing guy on there. His name was Eric Karlovich. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's one so, of my favorites. Yeah. So <laughs> it's interesting because it's sometimes we have to go places to do Pilates. 
Or if we're on holidays, someone has a studio and it works out for us to practice at. Was he someone that came to the island and you guys got to know each other? And then he was a guest teacher with you? Yeah, pretty much. He, um, he had uh, contacted me, I think, text or email or something and um, mentioned that he, he's so humble. He didn't like give me any indication of his background or anything. He was just like a random person that said that they wanted to come and use my equipment. And I'm always suspicious about that because I, you know, for safety reasons, I don't, I don't want people um, not taking a lesson with me before they come into my house and use my equipment. So I was kind of like, Oh, um, okay. Uh, We didn't set an appointment or anything, but he did show up one day and um, he's from Brazil. He's really sweet. He's so polite. And um, he just kind of looked in through the screen and said, hello, my name is Eric. And I'm the one who um, was contacting you. And, and then he, I invited him in and he told me about his background and I was like, oh, whoa, okay. Hi. And, and um, (laughs) yeah, as I said, sure, you can um, thought of a fee for him to come in and use the equipment and I just watched and I was like oh my gosh thank god it's it's so nice to have someone in person um uh, no Pilates at to at that level you know right next to me and so I got the idea I said how about you teach me in exchange for using the equipment and so I got a whole bunch of lessons from him and this was um before I was in the work, this was yeah. years, a couple of years before. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, oh, we had a blast. And um, I filmed him a lot because he's um, on social media. So the, I filmed him, we took the reformers outside on the front lawn mm-hmm. and it's just so yeah. scenic with all the coconut palms and the ocean and stuff like that. And, and um yeah, I learned a lot from observing him um, work out. And I learned a lot for, you know, as he was teaching me. Yeah. So, and then he also, um, you know, before you um, go into the work at Vintage Pilates, they have the summer camps. So yeah. he, um, we went to a summer camp one, one time he was there maybe it was 2012 or something. I think he went to a couple of um, camps. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so he's, I mean, he never went through the work or anything. He never um, had the desire to do that, but he's definitely, um, he knows a lot of um, uh, the graduates and. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. The video of him doing the long stretch and the stomach massage series. This, um, gosh, that just took my breath away. And that was yeah. 2014. And okay. you, if you follow him on social media, his body just keeps on yes. getting better and better like we all do, right? Yeah. So I was wondering, Arlene, if we could go to a little bit uh, and talk about body works and Pilates. So I went on your website. So I usually do a little bit of, I guess, some sleuthing around, uh, you know, about my guests. And um, I actually get a really good snapshot when I read people's websites. And I don't know if you've done this or when you created your website, but it really tells a little bit about a person and how they run their show. And um, I'm going to read to you exactly what it says on your website. I don't know if you've read it lately, but it it says under services, an all-inclusive body positive home studio in Maui, Hawaii, dedicated to teaching traditional Pilates and empowering people to take charge of their health. I love that. And Mm -hmm. I circled so many words. I wrote it down and I circled so many words and words that like, when did you write that Arlene? Um, It's, it's hard to say because um, I, I, my studio is not 
open since COVID. I'm still right. teaching. Right. Yeah. But yeah. as a business, I'm not open anymore. So prior to COVID, um, I was working, like I considered being um, on the computer and, and tweaking my website part of my daily routine. Yes, I do too. <laughs> Because it's, you know, like things change and, we, mm -hmm. you know, we add a page and offer mm. a little course or, you know, yeah. so I can't remember. I mean, that it's on the website right now is, you know, obviously it's the most recent tweak I made on my website. Um, I'm thinking um, maybe eight months ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting because a lot of the words that I see of what you wrote is what I kind of went through myself. And I don't know if it was COVID and just this activation of very socially minded things that were happening around the world. But um, the words like all inclusive and body positive and empowering taking charge. I mean, not that I was like uh, asleep pre COVID, but I pretty much was just running this business saying, I'm going to teach you this system of exercise. And then through COVID, it's like, I've kind of woken up to my real purpose as a teacher. You know, I'm in the business of healing. I'm the messenger of providing this service. And I really see that in your writing, that mm. body works and Pilates, whether it's open as a business or you're just doing it as a side thing, you're still just delivering this system of exercise. But your intentions and what you value, I, I just, it's very inspirational. It's not like here's the group on, you get one free if you sign up for 10, you know? It's just, yeah. it's more than that. And I think you alluded to that when you started our conversation, saying that Pilates is part of you. It is, yeah. it's not this separate entity. And I think that your statement there under your services pretty much tells a person what, what's going to happen even before yeah. they come in the room. Those of them that do go on the website. I mean, I get the cold calls from Instagram yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. But I think you're offering such a reward and you place a very high value on health and well-being. Mm -hmm. And um, can you speak to that a bit? Is that because of your process of really using your body and maybe overusing it as a landscaper or like, and I know that recently you even used the hashtag arthritis awareness, which oh. tweaked me. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, yeah, I mean, right now, my Pilates where I'm at right now, I really rely on it to heal my body just yeah. beyond my reformer. You know, mm -hmm. even if I do housework, if I do some cleaning up, if I do some moving stuff, I'm, I cannot wait to get back onto my apparatus to help to realign and get back into that health, return to health. I wonder if you could speak a bit about that and your philosophy about Pilates and sure. this return to health. Um, I, what I, um, you know, and it goes back to, you know, when I first came to Hawaii, that I realized that, you know, for a few years, I never even went to a supermarket. I was so um, figured out how to do everything myself, like not wow. rely on, you know, some of the, the economics or, you know, I didn't have bank accounts, you know, I... Yeah was really healthy living off the land. <laughs> um, that's it, kind of like a romantic kind of, but I did it and it's a reality and you can do it. We have the power to do that. We don't have to rely on a vehicle. We don't have to rely on a mm -hmm. supermarkets or, you know. So with um, 
with what is so profound to me about Pilates, one of the things is that um, it's it's ours to it, it's for it's for us, and we can manage so much about our lives by understanding Pilates and practicing Pilates. And one of one of the interesting things um, that I realized recently is that Pilates doesn't give you, I don't think, it's, it doesn't give you strength or flexibility. You don't get right. strength and flexibility. You already have it. Uh -huh. But what it does do is it, 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 it helps you to manage your experience. Ah, oh, beautiful. Moment, I have um, arthritis. Um, I have it this morning. I woke up like, oh. <laughs> but um, if I went, uh, I'll probably, um, after um, our chat, I'll probably go and do some reformer and figure it out, like where I'm at today. Maybe I'll even be able to do snake and twist. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, depends. Maybe not. Maybe. But like I can, you know, even on a bad day like today, um, I might be able to manage it so far as to do, you know, like a long spine or, you know, so it's it's not like, you know, Pilates doesn't give you strength and mobility. You you're navigating it mm -hmm. and and managing your experience in the moment. So and 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 that's what I try to uh, you can't teach that, but that's what I, you know, with my clients, I want them to know that they have the power to manage whatever's going on in their body. So if they can identify it, they can, they can manage it. And there's all this brilliant equipment here to, you know, play around with and, and, um, um, you know, make each session just so profound. So, wow. Wow. That's, that is incredible. You're very introspective and I don't know if it's where you are because you live on an Island and you've had to create these, um, systems of getting your own food in that you're very wise. Uh, it's, it's taken me um, to the point of a very bad hip injury and sore neck and watching my mother age to really realize that I'm not, I'm, what's the word, not infallible. Like my body is starting to come apart. <laughs> you, you live to die. This is a reality. I may still get up in the morning and think I look like I did when I was 20. <laughs> but, but my body is telling me something else. And I really had to come to a place of, unfortunately, injury for me to then move forward in this direction that, mm -hmm. and also I will talk that openly going through perimenopause, not quite menopause entirely, but pretty dang close, that Things are changing in my practice. And I, I didn't like that, Arlene. I didn't like mm. that at all. Yeah. I felt like shortness of breath. Yeah. I felt like my middle section was a little bit bigger than <laughs> it was before. So, you know, yeah. getting into stomach massage felt like I was kind of breathless and yeah. things like that. So it, it's quite amazing that, and, and quite lucky for you, that you had the experience early in life that you, you needed to sort of use Pilates to help you get better. I, I always, I actually used Pilates in the sense I used it. Mm. And, and now it's like, I'm, I'm not the, the abuser anymore to the Pilates. It's more like I've relaxed into it and I'm allowing it to help me. We're kind of a team now, but you know, Arlene, that took me a few years, you know, mm. lately, even after graduating from the work. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. um, if you don't mind sharing, how at what age, how old were you when you went through the work? Because I was up in the, I think I was maybe 46, 45, 46. And so I felt prime. Oh, and that's your that's, baby. 46 yeah, is like. graduated and then it's like, oh my God, I'm falling apart and I have all this work in my body and I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, it's so cool. It's, it is. Yeah. Um, I, I think I got into the work when I was 51. Okay. And um, I was still had that juice in me that okay. I could do 10 pushups. You know, I okay. could still, yeah, I still had that, those hormones in mm -hmm. me. That, yeah. That kind of power to, um, and to go the extra mile and go be ab abusive about it. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I felt it big time things were changing. And so I was nervous, a little bit nervous about, um, because, you know, the mornings that I would wake up and, and my, um, every single bone in my body just ached. It's like, how am I going to go and train? Yeah. Um, I, I had wished that I had gotten into the work a year earlier because I tried out one year earlier and didn't get in. Um, I wasn't ready, but one year earlier, I was more intact as far as like waking up and feeling yeah. like yes. I could do anything. Yes. So, so um, yeah, it was really interesting when I was in the work. I had um, my back went out so bad during the um, the the last module, the chairs, mm. and, and that's my favorite piece of apparatus the chairs and I was just heartbroken. I was my back. I never had my back go out like that ever. I don't even know why, but it was, yeah, I was having hot flashes. I remember um, mm -hmm. during the reformer module and you know, when Jay, um, you know, when, when you realize that you've got to keep your wrists straight when you, when you're, when you're doing the, um, uh, Swan long, or no long back, uh, long back stretch or long stretch. Yes. Yes. Long yes. Series. Yeah. And he came up to me and I was, you know, ready to just like jam through that whole series. And, you know, with the bent wrists, you know, I can like press out and do this and get, have rhythm. And he just came and uh, up to me and made my wrist straight on that bar. Mm -hmm. And I remember that there was like sweat dripping down my arm, dripping off of my knuckles and onto the floor. And he like adjusted my wrist. I was, I couldn't move. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid to, cause my hands were wet and you, you know, but that was, it was very, very um, interesting to, to, to be in the moment like that and be having hot flashes. Yeah. And along with that comes, it, it takes you a while to understand things like you don't like, I don't know how to explain it, but you know, what Jay was trying to show me, I felt like I still didn't understand until like the next week, I just had to like stop and think about that. And so it's just, yeah. So it, it was a lot of chaos in my body and um, the excitement of being in the room, like, you know, during those sessions, it, um, all of our classmates were all like, the intensity was so um, very memorable. And, and to be going through um, big time menopause, like big time hot flashes, big time brain fog, Yes. big time yes. uh joint pain like it was it was like multitasking that that I can't do very well anymore <laughs> so I wish that I had done the work one year earlier so that I wasn't in that whole kind of disorganized state but I wasn't ready for the work at all the year yeah. before like I didn't understand the 
concepts yet because I needed a lot more sessions. So there was a, like a, a, a trade-off there. So, but um, after the work, I, I think I like, like the year after and uh, probably two years after is, is when it, I was absorbing all of that information and that I was having such a hard time with menopause. It, it was okay. I mean, it was actually perfect because it was more using Pilates for being in the moment. Wow. That's incredible. Care. You know what I mean? Like, well, so I am now because I didn't before and I was sort of fighting. Exactly. I, I was fighting my 45 year old self in the work. And I'm talking now, like now that I'm going through this process of this menopause. And, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with people like yourself in my age. And, and, and I've just had to come to the realization that I have got to realize that Pilates it's like Jay always says you're not here for me to do a manicure to you Pilates isn't to do me it's to be in a partnership and I've got to meet Pilates where I'm at in my body but that's a whole thing about I don't know if that's grieving those years of when I could really do Pilates without breaking out in a hot flash without going oh You know, I didn't even go down into the push-up, but the way my hands went around in the air, my wrists had such sharp pain going on. Like, what the heck? But, yeah, I think Pilates softens me, though. It has softened me through the years, even though it's made me very physically supportive and everything. It sort of softened my who I am. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's very, it's like, a, it's, it's, you know, after the work, there's, there's just honesty. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. True. And there's no performance and there, it's just like being honest with what's really going on. Like if, if your back is out, like during the work, like, mm-hmm. okay, what, what do you do with that? Exactly. It's so authentic. Yeah. You know, you're doing like high level of Pilates, but your back is out. And so that's what it's about. And so, yeah. And, and, you know, the thing with menopause that, that I'm learning is that like, I'm not going to put my hands over my ears anymore and not listen to that roaring, the body's roaring, like stop and listen to it. And then Pilates starts to really make sense. Wow. It just it's so juicy and and um and um very honest and very forgiving and and that's when you know so much progress, you know. Yeah. The slowing down isn't like the actual doing it slow, it's like the slowing down so that you can just work on being honest, you know, and 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 then it it just gets so um, pleasurable. It's just, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It just, it just feels good. Yeah. Were Were you? Um, I, I want to kind of take a real ninety degree turn in our conversation, but I think it ties in with what you're saying. Were you so comfortable <laughs> with who mm-hmm. you were? in like, I think it was 2020 that you decided to, okay, I'm going to go to graduate program now in something entirely different. Because there, I've had these thoughts. I'm like, should I go back and try pole dancing? Should I go work in the coffee shop? And, and I, and I'm just too scared to do something different. How did you make this? Like, how did you do this? Uh, Well, I, I think even if, if it wasn't for COVID, I think I still would have gone in this direction. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I, um, you know, I love Pilates. It's a part of me. I, I do love teaching. I did not like running a Pilates studio. 
So I will always teach, you know, I've got, you know, I've got my clients um, that come every week. Um, but I don't want to run a business. So if I, you know, if for some reason I don't have the equipment in my house anymore, I, my dream would be for someone like you <laughs> or somebody from the work to move to Hawaii and open a studio. And then I would teach through their studio. I think that would be like heaven. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So you went in 2020 and you, you enrolled in, it looks like uh, the, at the university of San Francisco, is that correct? In the, you're uh, doing your MA in interior architect and design. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, I switched from an MA to an MFA. Oh, okay. So you want to talk a about that program? Little? Yeah, for the, our listeners, I do follow Arlene on another handle on Instagram, Adele Interior Design. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Arlene does these. I don't know what it is. At first, I thought she was making chocolate, <laughs> but oh. you were doing you were making pigments from the land making watercolor it was so intriguing the latest one i i showed it to paul i said this is who i will get to interview on monday <laughs> isn't she neat so can you talk about like these pigments um i know a project you worked on the go holo holo is that right oh wow holo, holo. Wow. You your research what I'm impressed yeah, the cafe the cafe redesign is that actually a real thing in Kihei that no. you oh well, I no, thought I should a... come and go to the cafe holo holo here it's a real it's a real place but it's a mock design assignment okay. um it, it was one of my assignments so yeah I'm in I'm in school uh, learning interior architecture and design and you know for, for me, you know, my background is an, an artist and, um, you know, I've done all these other things too and Pilates teacher and now I'm doing um, design again. I feel like it's like full circle, right? And the thing with design is that it, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. Design is such a collaboration of experience and who you're working with and so to me it's like the same thing it, it's not the same thing but it's like a continuation of pilates it's like to me it's it's like the same like kind of processing the way your brain thinks the way that you look at something and how you would connect with it or you know solve a problem like it's not like like there's all these different things that I'm switching around doing. Like this lady said to me, oh my gosh, I think it's so, so interesting when somebody your age still doesn't know what to do with their life. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, that's an interesting perspective because I, th I think of it all, all as like a continuation, like it's yes. so harmonious. Yeah. And so that, you know, the Pilates is informing my design and, you know, a big part of design is like healthcare. You know, I, I designed, I did a mock design of, uh, of a medical center, mm -hmm. you know, and, and what, what I know about the body, um, you know, when you choose furniture, it's gotta be ergonomic. Right. Right. Like mm -hmm. if you're sitting desk all day you're I mean your desk better be at the right height your keyboard better be you That's know so your true. like ergonomics is huge and so healthcare and design is goes hand in hand um so yeah and and because of my age like I I do a lot of um hand drawing like um construction documents even I I do by hand and all of my presentations, my drawings and stuff, I, I used um, watercolors and that I, I 
made myself from Maui basalt. Yeah, it's so, incredible. It's incredible. The last uh, Insta story was you creating the blackest of blackest pigment yeah, of, yeah, uh, yeah. from charcoal. Yeah, that's Kiavi wood charcoal. Um, wow. My husband's a chef. He barbecues a lot. So I, he had all this charcoal on the lawn and I just gathered it up. He was like, what are you doing? I said, oh my gosh, this is going to make the most beautiful black you've ever oh seen. My I grinded it yesterday mm -hmm. and it's, um, yeah. And so I use, I use those paints when I do my floor plans and my construction documents and my sketches. And so I use the, um, I mean, I also use, you know, store-bought pencils and watercolors and stuff, but mm -hmm. the, um, you know, and that goes back to, you know, like connecting and being, slowing you down, being in the moment and really like listening to, you know, what are we doing in the moment, you know? So the, the grinding your own paints, um, yeah, it slows you down, which is, I think, uh, in my opinion, is what we need these days. It's like with technology, it's like things are just speeding up so fast. And that's, if you're menopausal, that does not help. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you know, it's like there's enough chaos. So true. That is so true. I wonder if uh, you could talk a little bit about your uh, Patreon. Are you still doing your Patreon? Oh, I really love the idea of Patreon because it supports artists. You know, I love the idea of patronage, you know, back yeah. in the Renaissance days, mm -hmm. like artists would actually make a living. Um, but um, so I, would, I, you know, I love the concept. And so I gave it a try. And um, what I noticed with you know, I had my, it's called Pilates point of view. And I would um, try and film twice a month. And um, I wanted to share the repertoire. Here's what the exercises look like. Mm -hmm. And would hopefully encouraging um, whoever was interested to try it on their own, like do the exercise. And, and then if, they wanted to get more one-on-one -on -one that they would they could contact me and we could have a zoom private so that we could um get, get a little more um into detail but um so what i noticed was that that doing the video took an extraordinary amount of time yes and i tried to tried all of these things to make the um, make it not such a long drawn out thing. It was, you know, and th the money that I was getting, I was charging like $15 for a, um, a month for a, like a subscription. And, um, you know, if I did the math, like all of my time that goes into those videos and the editing and the uploading and the, mm -hmm. um, like I, sh I should have been paid an extraordinary amount. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It wasn't, it, it, it wasn't working. I, I did it. I kept doing the videos just because I wanted to get a database yes. on there yeah. mm -hmm. just, you know, for reference, if, you know, if I want to open it back up in the future, if I have a better um, economic model for it, if I could make it work. So, I mean, some, some people are really good at um, being in front of a camera and, you know, talking into the camera and demonstrating and I learned that it's not really my strong point <laughs> so I'd rather yeah. film someone else like you doing the exercises mm. and feature you on my mm. Patreon. Mm. but um, I don't think I'm going to pick it up um, for a while just because it um, it was such a time sink uh, but I still I didn't close down my account it's just not open for um any new subscribers I see. because i just couldn't keep up with it i couldn't I meet my quota for two videos a month so yeah it's on hold for now 
Yeah, that yeah. was a you know something, a solution that I was looking into to mm-hmm. especially during COVID, just mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I wasn't looking for more clients. I just want to get that information out there, you know. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting you say that because I was just having a conversation with someone who I'm training in-house to become a teacher here at Align Pilates. And I just said to her, how do we get this out there for the middle person? Yeah. It, it yeah. really, Pilates, I understand it is, you know, if you're going to want to learn how to play the classical piano or classical voice lessons, you're going to go and take that uh, Royal Conservatory, pay the money, pay for that teacher. I I do see that Pilates has sort of um, wedged themselves into that niche. But Mm. I think that, I don't know if this is all this socially minded stuff I keep watching that makes me softy, but I'm like, Pilates, I would love it to be available to more than just this person that can pay for this. And I have ran my sort of Patreon or sort of attempt at it too with YouTube. Nothing Mm -hmm. on there is charged. It's all free. I have clocked 55 videos, but like you too, it's exhausting. It's tiring. Mm -hmm. So it's like people complain a bit about how much Pilates costs, but then we put this content out there that's really a minimal amount of money, $15 a month or free on Pilates. And some people are using it and some people aren't. So I just don't even know what the answer is for that, Arlene. I just keep putting my nose to the ground and, you know, and when I get bored or I need to pick me up, I start a podcast. (laughs) We'll see how long yeah. this goes. But yeah. uh, I do think that the creative mind falls into doing Pilates. Like, I am forever having inside conversations with myself about something exciting. And I also do that in the room. Do you find that when you're doing Pilates that it sort of gets your creative juices flowing. Yes. And yes. it may not be like you're going to say, okay, I'm going to come up with a, a Patreon thing or, but I don't know. I always tell my students, I say, I don't do Sudoku or crossword puzzles. I do Pilates. It just yes. keeps my brain keeps going. It keeps thinking, keeps coordinating movement, muscle memory. Yeah. It's, it's the, the connection to ourselves is, it's infinite. And Pilates is a vehicle. It is. It's, it's, you know, and yeah, it's, it's infinite. And that's why we're, you know, we're going to be, it's not a, something that we learned and okay, been there, done that, move on kind of thing. It's, it's just, it's just expanded our, connection to ourself and that's very creative Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. yeah and and um as far as sharing it with others you know as we you know find out more about our bodies we get excited about you know how we're going to share it with our favorite clients yeah it's true I mean I'll be sitting in bed and I honestly have these like uh, Instagram if moments that I and I will write it in my my phone you know something that I've discovered or something and then I'll use it for content but um speaking of Instagram and social media I know you 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 did say at your age but I do see you on there you're still active even on the body works and Pilates more so yeah. on your interior design account but what are what's social media are you following right now it doesn't even have to be Pilates Arlene that is inspiring you or um, getting your juices going do you have any specific um, social media that you're following that you could share with us 
Um, as as far as um, uh, pe- folks on Instagram, that's that's what sure. I use. Yeah. Instagram. It's so yeah, visual. Yeah, I use. I'm not really a Facebooker anymore. I've kind of. No, Facebook is is um, uh, it's it's a cesspool. It's <laughs> it's <laughs> like sorry. It's just it's pretty scary. It's yeah. But there's there's uh, a couple of I I do go on because um, my girl. Um, Heather Richardson, I, I believe her name is. She's um, she's a historian and um, she's uh, she summarizes the politics of the day. Okay. Heather Cox Richardson. She's um, yeah. I don't know what I would do without her. She's a very sobering voice right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love Instagram. There's no drama. On Instagram, yeah. I've never had any um, kind of unpleasantness on Instagram. It's all visual. I follow you. Are extremely inspiring. Even before oh, we yeah. started having conversations, I was like, "Oh wow, you just got my attention." Mm-hmm. Just yeah, the quality of your work is um, is um, I could watch you forever, wow. and you. I get really inspired from vintage Pilates. Yeah. I just yeah. think it, um, the content that Sandy keeps putting out. Yes. Amazing. Consistently is very meaningful, yeah. inspiring. And all of, you know, everybody that responds to mm-hmm. uh, content is all very nourishing and very loving. And it's just like an island unto itself. Yes, right. it is, isn't it? My oasis. It's like, oh, peace. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It's like a culture, you know, this yeah. said culture. And, yeah. and we're very supportive of one another within that. Yeah. Yeah. And always, uh, always, there's always, there's a constant learning. It's, it's never stagnant information just to put out just because. Mm-hmm. It's always mm-hmm. provocative. It's always um, gets your gets your brain juices really flowing. So yeah, I go on there just to you know just to see vintage and you know our classmates. Every single one of them inspires me, and I watch their bodies changing like literally. Yes, you see so much of. Um, what's happening in their body and the way that they used to do an exercise and how they're doing it Mm -hmm. today is, is so fascinating and, and just um, lots of love because they're, they're our friends. They're, you know, people that we're deeply connected with. So, um, and I also um, on my, my other Instagram, my, um, interior design account I have like you know how you can save um, yeah yeah posts? I have probably a book <laughs> worth of um interior designers from all over the world okay that I follow and I get inspired from and in, you know Spain and mm-hmm. oh, just Africa and just all all of this mm-hmm. Japan all of this mm-hmm. interior yes. design yeah Yes, I think I have that sort of, um, we share that love for that. I think I followed Slow Roads because of you, perhaps. Oh, yeah. 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 And, then, yeah. and then I just, you know, you go from them and you can just go into the little black hole. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all yeah. These wonderful, <laughs> wonderful places. What are you reading these days or are you reading anything these days? Oh, my- Gosh, I'm read. I'm I'm getting a master's degree. I'm reading everything. Oh my gosh! This summer, I just finished um, on Wednesday my summer semester, and I took traditional architecture down through the ages. So we started in prehistory um, and ended at um, like maybe 1750. So wow. we're not in the industrial age. Yeah, that's considered contemporary. But yeah, I had to read, um, you know, um, 
history and it wasn't just architecture it was you know philosophers like plato and aristotle and you know all these other philosophers that i didn't even know about and we had to write every three days we had to write like a three-page essay so i've been um, researching and reading writing and then you know a midterm project was an eight pager the final project was an eight pager that i um combined um uh, land use Mm -hmm. and um, conservationists like John Muir and Aldo Leopold and how that's related to economy mm -hmm. and colonization of the Americas. Mm -hmm. And, oh, just, yeah, it was a very undeveloped paper because my thoughts were all over the place. But I had a, a teacher that, um, was okay with that. And um, so she let me just um, um, explore because writing is so is so hard. Like I could take two weeks just to write two sentences because it's... Yes, I find that for myself now lately oh, too. Yes, yeah. So write, having to, you know, a deadline. Oh, you've got a three page essay to write. It's like, whoa. So, but she let me just... Um, be very random like to me it's yeah. not random it's all connected but like if you're a reader you'd be like what now we're talking about economics oh I thought we were talking about land use oh I thought we were talking about colonial architecture like so anyway just bits and pieces of research and blah just like mm. trying to put it into words um so um yeah it was it was really good and then um what let me let me get this book she um my teacher here it is landscape and memory oh landscape and memory landscape and memory isn't that fascinating so yeah that's what that's what i'm gonna um dig into um next i have two two and a half weeks off until my fall semester starts but it's got like you know all this artwork from um anselm kiefer and um oh my gosh this book is delicious so yes i'm gonna be i think i'm gonna be doing this um for my reading in the next couple of weeks and so we'll, we'll see how that goes i also read um during COVID, um, breath. Oh, with the uh, Nestor or? Yes. Yes. And that was pretty mind blowing. The exhale, yeah. right? <laughs> he yes. went into detail and, and all these studies about the exhale. And he even yeah. put, I think, um, something up his nose so that he, he could, uh, experiment with just mouth breathing and how sick that made him. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's interesting. I haven't read that yet, but uh, I also know, know Newer has read it. And I've seen oh. others of our friends posting that, th that they have read that. So I should put that okay. on my to do. Um, there yeah. is one Instagrammer that I think you might pique your interest. She's a young gal. I don't know why I can't find anyone my age to follow. <laughs> and they're all these young and up and coming. Yeah. Uh, her name is Camille Shane and um, she does Green Dreamers podcast. And she does a lot. Have you heard of her? No. But amazing. Um, now you talk about random. Every episode is of a different something, you know, but it's also very always socially minded you know how do we fit in to this those have really interested me arlene we are coming to the end uh, there's a couple of questions i just want to ask before we go and they're very specific that i ask all my guests mm -hmm. if you were as soon as we're done this conversation what are some exercises that you would love to do for your body today Today, I definitely um, 
want to do footwork on the reformer. And um, if I can get rid of the chatter <laughs> in my head and just calm down and just listen to my body, that will develop into just going, doing the whole, yes. you know, the whole repertoire and just leaving out. Um, I'm guessing because I went to the chiropractor, I did have to go to the chiropractor um, last week because, you know, writing all of those um, papers mm -hmm. at the computer. Yes. I'm really am unbalanced right now. So I need some assistance. And so my neck is really, look, I can't even like, yeah, well, that's pretty, good. that's pretty good. Yeah. But so I'd, I'll probably not do overhead, but mm -hmm. you never know. You never know. Really good footwork. Yeah. That might, that might set you up to like, oh, I mm -hmm. oh, and drop it. And then it feels good. And then, yeah. So who knows? I'm going to hop on my reformer. Oh, yeah. good. Good. Yeah. Well, you sort of answered a little bit of, of my next question. Um, it is, what, what would you tell someone new coming to Pilates? What Pilates, what, what, what will it be for them? What do you expect or what, what can Pilates give them? Uh, the opportunity to experience their body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very interesting that I'm not speaking for you, but it took me a long time to move away that Pilates was there to shape my body. Mm. And now it's like we're exploring my body. Mm. Why is this your why is half of my back not feeling the one side of my mat? <laughs> What is so curious about that, yeah. you know, and why when I'm doing the spine corrector this morning, you know, Ken said, looks like you're not ready to put your head back. And I said, mm -hmm. I know. So I had to come back up. I had to reset, keep working on that two way stretch. Mm -hmm. My old self would have just tried to force the shape yeah. of the spine corrector. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a hard thing to teach. You can't teach that, as you've alluded to many times in our conversation. Yeah. 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 Well, I hope and I'm not coming to grad camp, unfortunately, because of, you know, COVID and the circumstances. But maybe mm -hmm. next year, if it runs, I hope, hope it does. But I do hope in the future, Arlene, I get to come to your beautiful paradise in Kihei, correct? Is it in the Kihei community? Yeah. Yeah, and that would be amazing if you, yeah. if you came. Yeah. I would be so happy to oh. have you here. We could, oh. we could have so much fun. I know, yeah. I, I'm sure you're we like can. Hiking. You're a hiker. You're yes, like I am. Yes, I, I think that oh if God. I didn't have nature, I don't know what I would do. Right, right, right. You, you must, we must plan a hike, an expedition into the, um, the national park up here at 10,000 feet. There's mm. a, there's, there's cabins up here. Oh, wow. It's supposedly the quietest, Haleakala is like the quietest place on earth. Like even scientists, you know, how they measure sound with all this equipment. They say that the, the lack of sound doesn't even register in this place because it's it's so quiet. And um, anyway, it's it's like I'm always trying to find people to go up there with me. I took Sandy went in with me. We had like I think we did at least an overnight. Nice. Um, it's it's spectacular. It's yeah, and it's yeah, it's very nice. It's very wonderful so please put that on your your uh radar for, you know if you if you have the opportunity to travel that you you have a place to stay here and mm -hmm. i would 
play with you in my studio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. And I would love to mix some of that blackish okay. charcoal. Because I just we feel like that. that's just uh, something that I want to do. I'm not oh. very artistic in terms of drawing or anything, but playing around with uh, the pigments would be something lovely. Thank you, Arlene, for your time with me. Yes, and well, I appreciate our chat together. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you for joining me today here on Chatter from the Center, a Pilates podcast where I have interesting conversations with Pilates enthusiasts like yourself and how we get to chat that Pilates is much more than a workout. Conversations with my guests continue after our chat and can be found on my Instagram at Align Pilates or in the comments section on YouTube. If you are a Pilates lover and enjoy these chats, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Align Pilates, and click on the notification bell for my next Chatter from the Center guest. Until then, keep moving and we'll chat next time.